Argentina have without a doubt been one of the most improved teams of the World Cup tournament. The side enjoyed a shaky start to say the least as they faltered in a shock defeat to Saudi Arabia, but they soon kicked on and now find themselves in the final in what could make for a fairy tale narrative for Lionel Messi, who's confirmed that this will be his World Cup bow. Right from the off, it's worth noting that Argentina haven't set up in the same way throughout the tournament, which has made them unpredictable. Scaloni has changed formation for each of Argentina's six games, switching from a 4-4-2 base to a diamond to a three at the back system and even a 4-3-3. In many ways, it's the perfect approach for a knockout tournament, but whilst the tactics have varied, the philosophy has always been the same. Scaloni has built this side on the premise of being direct in their approach, and that's been a constant whether they've had the lion's share of possession or not. In the six games that Argentina have played, they've averaged just 58.2% of possession proceedings, which is around 7% less than what they averaged in the 2018 World Cup tournament that was led by Jorge Sampaoli. What we've actually seen in this tournament is a changing of the guard to some extent. The point is, the highest possession playing sides of the tournament are all out, with none managing to even progress past the semi-finals. And that, of course, is all whilst some of the lower possession playing sides like Morocco, France and Croatia have managed to join Argentina in progressing to the latter stages of the tournament. So playing into this, Scaloni's side have been at their best in the back and forth games. By not having as much of the ball, they're able to make the game more open by allowing the opposition to progress. And we've seen this in the quarter-final game against the Netherlands, as well as the 3-0 semi-final win against Croatia, in which Scaloni's side had just 39% of the ball. So looking at the semi-final bout then, Argentina poetically returned to the formation that they started the tournament with, which was the 4-4-2 system. Off the ball, Scaloni's side looked to draw the opposition out with a mid to low block method, sticking to their native 4-4-2 as the Croats came rushing forward. Interestingly, there was an initial overloading press whenever Croatia entered the mid third. The midfield four were integral to sustaining this pressure with Lionel Messi's strike partner, Julian Alvarez, happy to join in with these defensive duties. So when Croatia would look to stretch the play out on the flanks, an overload of three to four players would all press with Alvarez acting as the trigger in most cases. If Croatia was successful in working the ball into the center of the pitch, those players would quickly return and drop into a low block, fluctuating between a 4-3-2-1 shape, but ultimately returning into a neat 4-4-2. Meanwhile, the back four were happy to stay back with the bank of four in front, given license to press aggressively with spaces behind them astutely covered. When Argentina had the ball, they'd progress play as fast as possible. On counter-attacks, the likes of Alvarez and Messi were key, with one or two other initiators charging alongside them. The rest of the team would stay back though, rather than running the risk of committing bodies forward to then be hit on the counter. In more sustained attacks, there was a real system in place. Building on from that fullback system that we saw against the Netherlands, Molina, and in this case Tagliafico, served as makeshift wingers. Whenever Argentina worked the ball up, the fullbacks would act as wingers, sitting high and wide to stretch play. It was a process that ensured that there were five attackers in the front line, which ultimately created space in the central areas with Croatia spread. Whilst Messi was of course granted the ability to roam free in the final third, the likes of Enzo Fernandez, who's a defensive midfielder by trade, was happy to be the more offensive player in the pivot duo with Leandro Paredes. In both phases, Argentina was solid and always looked threatening on the attack. Their adaptation of playing with a lower amount of possession is a style that works well and tricks the opposition into committing bodies. In reality, Scaloni's low block is just a guise to draw out the opposition and allow his attackers to shine. The World Cup final against France will certainly be an interesting one, with Deschamps' side happy to see even less of the ball. It should be fun, it should be end-to-end, -end, it could be Lionel Messi's time to shine. 